Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to the Whimsical Whirl class. I'm so excited to bring you this class. All of these tangles that we're going to be doing today are part of Inktober Tangles 2022. And I just love this challenge. It's such a great challenge to be involved with. And I've been asked to teach this class for the Pagosa Tanglers Group in Pagosa, Colorado. Um, I am going to be their guest teacher for tomorrow. So I wanted to share this video with you all so that everyone had a chance to do it. But big shout out to Roberta Strickland and to Kimberly White for having me teach for you guys. I'm very honored and so excited to be here for you. So let's talk about the things that we're going to need for class. We're going to be working with the Micron PN pen, a graphite pencil, a white gel pen. I have the Mizu Love, but you can also work with the Signo Uniball or with the Sakura Jelly Roll. I'm going to be working on a four and a half by four and a half inch tile. I have these at the Tangled Yogi shop. This is the Genesis tile. It's very, very smooth paper. And I just love this for doing color pencil work. It's one of my favorite tiles and I use it all the time when I'm teaching my tangling classes. So go to the Tangled Yogi shop to check those out if you're interested. And with that said, let's get started with the Whimsical Whirl. So I really wanted to just take a moment before we actually start tangling and talk about composition for a minute. And one of the things that I notice is that I will go back and look at a composition that I have done in the past and play with it and try different things with it. And I actually did this tangle of quite a bit ago. This one actually was um, April 3rd, 2019. And I did this piece. I was down in Ventura County and I saw this symbol on the back of a truck. It had the kind of swirls on it and it had this pattern in the center of it. And I thought it was so cool. And of course, you know me, I love to use henna drum, so I used henna drum on it that time around. Now, when I was trying to come up with an idea for class, I was thinking about this piece because I had um, started putting all of my pieces into a folder where I could look at all of my tangles, and this one caught my eye, and I wanted to rework it again, and so here I am with all new tangles, even though they're similar in nature, it's different because they are not the same tangles that I used the first time around. And what I love about this, and a lot of my students ask me, how do you come up with ideas for classes? And really what it is, is I look at a composition and I'll change it and try something new. And so that is where the idea for class came for this, this particular class that we have. So I'm so excited to bring this to you and let's get started with that. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to go ahead and start with my graphite pencil and I'm going to start by putting my dots in the corners here, the regular old-fashioned Zentangle way. And we're going to start by creating our really nice border. You can see I've got a little wiggle and wobble in my line today. That's okay. You know, the idea is to be human, not to be perfect, right? We're human beings, not human doings. So you can see that I've got my border all set up. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to divide the space in half. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So it almost looks like we're working with a kite, right? So you have the, the division line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quarter. Now if you're in another part of the world and you're viewing this video, you can just take a small coin. I know a lot of people feel very uncomfortable uh, with drawing a circle. So what I like to do is I take a coin right in the middle here of my piece and I'm just going to go ahead and trace the circle with my pencil. If you've got a circle maker, you can grab your circle maker, but this is kind of a nice economical way to do this. 
and you can see that when I zoom in, this is going to be my string for the class today. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to start to build our tangle. Okay, so we have our basic string. I'm going to pick up my micron P and pen here, and I'm going to just go into the center and ink in my circle and you can see that I'm really taking my time with it so I'm left-handed as you can see so I'm working on the left hand side but if you're right-handed you can work on the other side and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an internal aura on this piece here now you know I know that people get really caught up in being perfect just take your time when you do your internal aura. You know how Rick and Maria always say that it shows up in your lines if you're rushing. So, you know, I just take my time. So there I have the internal part here. So we're going to be doing a really fun tangle called Snack by Thomas Pedros. And I'm just going to show you a version of it. So go ahead and grab a little scratch piece of paper and we're going to learn the tangle. Okay, so Snack by Thomas Pedros. Really fun tangler um, out of Spain. He's wonderful. If you ever have the chance to look up some of his other tangles, he, he really comes up with some fun stuff. So Snack is just an S that's kind of elongated. So you can see that I've got these kind of hooks on the top and on the bottom. Now I'm going to come up to the top and give it a little teardrop. And I'll go down to the bottom and give it a little teardrop. And all you're doing is you're doing a connection from this arc and this arc back to the center here. So I'm just going to come in and do a snack. And it's such a cute little tangle. It's got a lot of fun feeling to it. And you can really elongate it and make it do some fun things. So you can, you know, get all kind of bombastic with it. And what I like to do is kind of make it slide down a little bit. And then, you know, kind of slide right up the back which is kind of fun. So you can kind of get goofy with it and play around with it. So that is Snack by Thomas Pedros. Now some people like to put in a little bit of a um, a little bit of a heavy line right in here and right in here just to give it a little bit of kind of, um, how should we say, a little bit of weight. You could come in over here and come over there as well. So that is Snack by Thomas Pedros. So we're going to do a version of snack here where we're going to get a little bombastic with it and kind of stretch it out, if you will. So I want you to think of a question mark here instead of an S, um, but it's going to have a little bit of curve to it. So I'm going to start right in here and I'm going to start my question mark right up at the top and I'm just going to let it slide down the side of my piece here. I'm going to turn my tile counterclockwise and I'm going to do it again. So all I'm doing is creating a little bit of a question mark and I'm going to let it slide down the side of the circle. I'm going to turn, let it slide, turn, and let it slide. Now once I have that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to create that little teardrop shape in the top here and then once again just like snack we're going to create that arc that's going to drop down and touch. Now on the back side of it I'm going to create a triangle like shape so it's just going to come down like so. Let's do that again together. So I'm just going to come in make that teardrop shape. You can see that I've just you know gone to the one that's right behind this. And now I'm going to do that little arc that touches down. And then I'm going to come behind the arc and make a little arc that creates a little triangular like shape. Here we go again. Up and over. Down and in. And then slide down. Coming over. Arcing in. Make your little and then sliding down. 
and you get this really fun kind of shape in here that has a really nice movement to it, which I really love. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to start to add to the piece. So one of my favorite tangles in Inktober this year is Walk the Line. And this is by Chris Titus, and she's a fantastic tangler, one of my favorites. And so let me just give you a quick little version of Walk the Line. Now what I've noticed that she does is that she kind of fills in an arc first with bubbles or with tipple, or you could see it as Bronx Cheer if you wanted to. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill that in and then you create this beautiful wave around the piece. And then you come in and let's go ahead and zoom in on this. You create these very narrow petals that just dance along that wavy line. And you can see that I'm just coming up and touching it like so, but I'm getting these really wonderful little interstices along the way. Those are those kind of funky little triangle shapes that are up on the line. You can see that I'm just jumping off the side of each petal and building. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to puddle. Puddle means you're pooling your ink into the areas. just like so. And it gives this tangle a really beautiful graphic feel. And what I love about this tangle is that you can layer it so you can do another set right behind it or you can leave it singular but the shading on this is going to be fantastic. So let's go ahead and come back to our original piece here and what we're going to do is we're going to put walk the line in between here. So let's take a look at this and come into it. So I'm going to come into this little arc right in here. You can see that I've got this like little swoop that's happening here. And I'm going to do another arc. And I'm going to aura it. And then I'm going to do a wavy line. Just like so. I'm going to turn. I'm going to arc. I'm going to aura it and then I'm going to do a wavy line. Now these are basically the same size. They're not perfect. They won't be perfect because we're not perfect, but I'm going to do my best to try to keep them about the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and arc, do an aura, and a nice wavy line. And then one more time here, arc, aura, and then a nice wavy line. So you can see that when I zoom out, it gives us a really cool feel. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then I'm going to come in and we're going to start to do our tangles on the inside. So let's go ahead and start to add those petals into the inside. So you're going to see me come up and touch the edge and drop down and then I just jump off the side of each of those petals. Now you can see that I'm really taking my time with my lines here. Just getting in here and working my way around. And then I'll go to the next one and I'll do the same. Now I can come in and I can puddle just like so. Really get in there. Having some fun with it. And look at how cool and graphic that is. Isn't that lovely? So I'm going to go around and do all of mine just like that. You go ahead and do yours. Remember to relax your shoulders, take in a deep breath, let it go with a sigh, and have fun. Isn't that so cool? I just love this. So let's go ahead and put some circles or some tipple into the center of the piece here. So you're going to see me just start to add in 
those tipple and you can see I'm I'm taking my time tipple is one of my favorite tangles and for me I just get into a zone with it so you can see that it looks really neat with all of those circles inside of it and if you get any interstices you can puddle in those interstices to really make them pop Remember, the interstices are those kind of strange little spaces that show up in between. So I'm going to do all of those with mine. Is that fun or what? <laughs> so we're going to add more to this here. So one of my favorite tangles, I know I keep saying that, but I'm really coming up with a bunch of tangles that I'm quite in love with during this uh, Inktober, is called Heartfully, and this is by Helen Williams. And what Helen has done is she's taken a heart and turned it into a petal of a flower so you can see all I'm doing is drawing hearts where they're touching each other now you could also do it in reverse too where you have the hearts go outwards if and that kind of has like a, a pansy kind of feel to it whoops that one's a little goofy <laughs> So you could do it that way as well. And if you wanted to, you could make, you know, um, some longer in between, which would be kind of fun. And get really goofy with it. So Heartfully uh, by Helen Williams. So what I want to do is I want to come back to our piece here. And let's just bring that right back in. And you can see that I've got these fantastic triangles that are inside my snack by Thomas Pedros. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in right in here. And I'm going to start by doing a nice aura. Now, normally when I have a triangle, I want to stick the tangle well in there, but I have to get out of that habit because I do it all the time, and so I like to challenge myself. So you can see that I've got this really nice corner here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a heart in that corner. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to just let that heart start to touch right there. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to let a heart come down from the top. And there you can see we've got heartfully just with three instead of um, instead of four or however many you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to puddle on the outside to really get a dramatic effect in there. And you could even do the inside if you wanted to, but I think I'm just going to put a little dot in there just to make it interesting. So let's do that again together. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to do our triangle first. We're going to aura the triangle. And then we're going to do a heart coming off of this corner. One and two. We're going to do one that's going to just come over and touch it. One and two. And this one's a little goofy, but that's okay. One and two. And so I'll come back around and I'm going to go ahead and puddle. I'll do a little puddling in here since it didn't actually touch, and that's okay. And then I'll put a little dot in the center. All right, so that's heartfully in a triangle. Go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to go ahead and finish up mine. Super fun little tangle. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this and going, uh-oh, there's a mistake in the video. Well, yeah, sort of. We lost a segment, so we're going to have to re-record the segment. So here we go. We're going to be working up in here. So don't worry. I know that everything is on your page already on the inside, but we're going to be working in the exterior here. And we're going to be doing a really fun tangle. And this is called Braven Sword, and it's by Debbie New. And the way that this works is you're going to go ahead and you're going to make a line and a circle on top of the line. 
and then like poke leaf you're going to come up from the bottom and make a leaf and then swing around and touch and that is this beautiful tangle and look at all the beautiful things that you can do with it it's super fun so let's come back in here and start to create the tangle. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to come right off of the back of uh, snack here and I'm going to go ahead and make my line and a circle and then I'm going to come up like poke leaf and come up and in. Now I'm going to do it again where I'm going to go out, make my circle and then come up like poke leaf and swing back in again. Now I had tried to re-record this a couple minutes ago and I had a little snafu where I made my line too close but oops opportunities are great opportunities to teach around so you can see that my line got really close so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in make my little circle and continue my poke leaf and go right in again and we're good to go. So here we go. I'm just going to keep on rolling here. I'm going to come right off the back of snack, make my line, come up and over, and come back in. Now here's where I want to be mindful, so I'm not too close this time. And in and over. And I'm just going to keep floating around here, so going up, and out, make my leaf, come in, and one more time for good luck. This one will look like it's coming underneath. And it really gives a nice sway to the piece, don't you think? So after this we'll be back to our regular programming. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Okay, so I am going to add in one more tangle to this and you know I was really trying to stick with all of the tangles that are in Inktober but I have to add this one in because I haven't had a chance to bring it into any of my classes. So most of you know that I love tipple, the tangle tipple, and so we're going to do a tangle called mushroom. Now I have to tell you this tangle eludes me because I saw it on a YouTube um, tutorial and for the life of me I don't know who did it so I apologize to whomever came up with this. So mushroom is really tipple with a division in it and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in those divisions by auraing those lines in there and what it ends up looking like is the bottom of a mushroom. So if you turned a mushroom over you would see these really cool little um, scales underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start to add those in. So I'm going to come in right in here and do one right here and then I think I'm going to do one over here because I want it to have the feeling of almost like tipple where it's effervescing off and you can see that I'm kind of getting it to float away. Now I'll come in and let's go ahead and zoom in on this bad boy. And then all I'm going to do is just fill in those spaces from the center out. I really love this tangle and I really love shading it. It's a beautiful tangle to shade. But look at how fun that is. Isn't that, it's otherworldly, I think. So you're going to see me just start to ray out from the center. And you can see that I'm really taking my time with this. Super fun. Coming over here, dividing it out. So this tangle is called mushroom because it looks like the under half of the cap of a mushroom. 
So you can decide how much or how little of this you want to do. I'm just going to keep on flowing around with it and deciding where I want my little mushroom to go and you know I like to vary up the size of um, my tipple so of course I'm going to vary up the size of my mushrooms too. So let's do another grouping together here and then I'll let you go and do it on your own. So I've divided it. Let's go ahead and bring that in and then all I'm doing is coming in and doing the under half. Coming over here Ooh, this one came out really good. You know, I feel like I get the hang of it right as I'm starting to get close to the end. <laughs> Anybody else out there like that? All right, so now when I zoom out, look at how fun those are. It really has a nice energy to it. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and when we come back, we're going to start to place our border. Okay, so this is really coming along. I love the feel of this, and I love how the mushrooms, they kind of make it look like confetti almost. So this is really, really fun. Now, what I'm going to do, and I can see that I missed one. Oh, there's always one that gets away, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start to place our uh, our border on this. And so what this is going to look like is you're going to see that we're going to have to have some interruptions in our line. So I'm going to come back to my border that was penciled in in the beginning. And I'm just going to start to work my way around and use the holly ball method. And for those of you who are not familiar with the holly ball method, it's the idea of weaving over and under. So the tangles are on top and the line is underneath. And so it gives the illusion that things are almost breaking the border, which is, I think, one of my favorite elements of Zentangle. So I'm just working my way around here. And you can see that just by adding the border, it's starting to change the composition yet again, which is always so cool, I think. So now we've got this really nice way of seeing the piece where it has a little bit of gravity to it. So go ahead and ink in your border. And then when we come back, it's time for color, baby. So since this is the autumn season, we see a lot of gemstone colors in fashion and in the world around us too. And so I'm going to be using colors that are very heavily gemstone oriented. So I'm thinking of amber, I'm thinking of amethyst, I'm thinking of emerald, those really rich colors. That's what we're going to be using a lot of in our tangle today. And we're going to start with the amethyst first, but you can change this up. Remember, you don't have to use the same colors as me, and you know I encourage you guys to go off the rails and really make it your own. So by all means, take this and turn it on its head if you like. I am going to be working with the lilac that color and this is PC956 nine, uh, and then I also have in my hand here my favorite the Dahlia purple and I just love this color and I think that this is PC1009. So let's start in the center of the piece here. You can see that I'm nicely sharpened up. And if you are unfamiliar with doing color with me, I'm just going to give you a law that I kind of stick to when I'm working with my Prismacolor pencils. Each color is three different colors. It's light, it's medium, and it's dark. It's all about the amount of pressure that you put on your pencil. And sometimes if you've got a light color like this one, it's nice to keep a darker color around for extra drama. So I'm going to come into the center of this piece here. And let's go ahead and zoom on in. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my uh, lilac first. And you can see that I'm rubbing the side of the pencil into the paper. I'm not holding my pencil in the traditional way. I'm actually holding it with my index finger, my thumb, and my middle finger to stabilize it. Now the reason why I do this is because if I was working with the tip of the pencil that would mean a lot more work and this way I get a really nice mist of color. So I'm just coming in and you can notice that I'm leaving a little bit of a light source on the left hand side. Now once I have that, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to press a little bit harder with that pencil and you'll notice now I'm using the tip of the pencil to create that heavier color. Now once I have that, and I'm really making sure that I get around the edges of this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up that darker purple. Now I'm going very lightly with the darker purple right now. I'm really trying to get kind of a soft mist or a shadow around the outside edge of that color. So I'm not pressing hard and I am using the tip of my pencil for this one. Now I'm going to go to the outside edge and I'm going to press nice and hard on this bad boy. I really want to get this real nice kind of almost amethyst feel in the piece. So I'm really turning the piece and getting in there. Nice coloring. Really highlighting the edges of it. Now this is a trick that I really love to do and this is where I'm going to switch back into my lilac here. And the reason for this is, is that I want to kind of blur out my edges but I want to use a color to do it. I don't want to lose the intensity of the color. If I switch over to white now, I'm going to lose the intensity. So I'm just switching over into the lilac now and doing little circles. Now I'm really starting to go very, very light with that lilac. I'm barely touching the page now with that pencil. So you can see that it's really, really light. Now once I have that and I feel like I've got it to the way that I want it here, and I do really like that, I just feel like that light source is still a little too big. So I'm just dusting through it a little bit. Now, now I'm going to pick up that white. And this is the PC938. This is one of my favorite colors in Prisma because it acts as a wonderful blender. Now, you'll notice there's a little blue on my tip right there. You always want to make sure that your white is all cleaned off so that when you're blending your colors, you're not dragging other colors that you didn't mean to bring in there. So now I'm doing these little circles and blurring this out. And getting right in there and I'm starting to drag that darker color out just a little bit. Now if you feel like you lost a little bit of that darker color you can always come back in like I'm doing right here and just reworking right over the top of it just to get a little bit of that drama. I don't know about you, but whenever I, I look at amethysts, they have a very soothing quality. And so I do love to work with this kind of coloring. And I'll get a little heavy on the edges just to give a little bit more drama. Super pretty. Really, really nice. Okay, so that's where I'm at with this. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to start to bring some more color into this piece. 
So I felt like it was a little too pink for me, so I actually picked up my violet, which is PC932, and added just a little bit of violet on that outside edge there, and I really like the contrast that I'm getting. So I, you know, girl has a mind of her own. She's got to pick up the colors that she likes, right? All right, so let's talk about these triangles out in here. This is where that heartful is, which I really love. And so we're going to start to pick up some greens for that. And I love it because, you know, these particular um, shapes really do lend itself well to leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in. And the colors that I have in my hand are the lime peel green, which is PC1005. And then I also have in my hand the Prussian green, which is PC109. Okay, so those are the two that I have there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in just with that lime peel green first and just lightly dust in with that lime peel green. And then I'm going to come to the outer edges of this and I'm going to do a dusting of that Prussian green. And I'm going to dust it a little bit harder right along the edge here and come in right over here. And you can see that that really brings a nice electricity in there. I'm going to come back with some of that lime peel green and just do little circles very lightly where that darker green is meeting the light green. Notice how I'm really working on keeping the light towards the center. And look at how pretty that is. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to do all of those in my little star here. Is that cool or what? I love the way that those are framing that purple. It's so pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to our really fun um, uh, Braven's Sword here, and I'm going to start to do some shading into the Braven's Sword. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to dust the bottom with that really, really light green. This is that lime peel green. And I'll bring it up and around. And then once I have that, I'm going to come in with that Prussian green and I'm going to bring some drama into this. Now I'm going to press a little bit harder right here. and go a little bit lighter as I get to the top. See how I went to the lime peel green to blend it out a little bit? Now I'm going to come over here and add just a little bit of heaviness with that lime peel green, which is so pretty. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. And then I'm going to bring in some of that white. Now I've got to clean off the top here. Just make sure that this isn't blurring out and I'm going to blur out my edges a little bit and I'm going to blur out my greens too. Now I had this kind of unforeseen thing happen where it does look like the flap of poke lily because the other line came up so I think I'm going to color that in too and so I'll, I'll start by just coming in with that light green And I think I'm going to leave it light green just to give this kind of feeling that it's curling into. So I'm going to come over to the next one and do the same. So you're going to see me just drop in with that really, really nice light lime peel green. And I'll even do this one as well. And then I'm going to pick up that Prussian green again. I love this combination because that Prussian green doesn't have a ton of blue in it. It has a lot of neutral in it, and I really enjoy that. I used to use a lot of grass green, but recently I've switched over to the Prussian green and really enjoying it. Coming back in with some of that lime peel green here, blurring it out, and then I'm going to press a little bit harder over here. 
and then I'll bring in some of that white and start to blur my greens a little bit. So that when you look at this, I'm going to zoom out. Look at how pretty that is. It really has a nice energy. It almost feels like this is coming out from underneath and blooming into this beautiful tangle. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. Ooh, I love that flow. Isn't that fun? I just love the way that this feels. Okay, so we are going to let go of the greens just for a little while, and we're gonna pick up some oranges that I really love. So one of my favorite colors is the Golden Rod, and this is a PC134. This is one of my favorite for fall uh, colors. And then I'm also going to be working with the most creative color of all time, orange. I think the person who designed this color must have been like away on vacation and they just named it orange because all the other oranges are called more fun names. <laughs> all right, so we're going to be using these too and I'm going to be using these inside of our um, walk the line because sunflowers really feel like um, that's the, the way to go with these colors here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the goldenrod first and I'm just going to, let's go ahead and zoom in on this, I'm going to dust very very softly around the head of the sunflower here and then I'm going to go out to the edges. You'll notice that I am leaving a white band in the center of each of these petals. Now you can do all of this with gray too if you wanted to just stick with traditional black and white it would look really really pretty too. So I'm going to come in now with that orange and I'm just going to go right along the inside channel here and start to give this a little bit of glow. And then I'm going to come up in here and give it some more glow. And look at how that brings such a vividness into the piece here. Now in that area where I started I'm going to start to come back in with some of that goldenrod and just go over the top of it with little circles. So you can see I'm working on the tip of my pencil and I'm going with little circles and kind of blurring it out. I want the colors to be a little bit more earthy and goldenrod has a way of taking orange and dampening it down a little bit and look at how beautiful that is it really has a nice feel so let's go ahead and do all of our petals and then we'll start to come into the center okay wow <laughs> Is that fun or what? I'm really enjoying this. I hope you're enjoying it too. It's really coming along. So let's talk about um, these, this orange that we have in here. I want to make it look as if that orange is kind of feathering off into the ethos. So you guessed it. I'm going to start to bring that orange into my mushrooms in here. And I'm also going to bring it into the head of the the, um, the Braven Sword. So you're going to see me come in with just a little bit of that really nice uh, goldenrod and then just a splash of the orange in there. And then I'm going to come into the mushroom here and I'll start with the goldenrod. And I'm going to shade it the way that I would shade a tipple or an orb. So I'm coming in and now I'm going to get a little bit of that orange on there. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of that white and just kind of blur those things out a little bit. And I might even come back in with a little bit of that goldenrod again. Now I feel like I'm not getting enough 
intensity off of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a brown and you know me, I really enjoy the Tuscan Red. It's one of my favorites. This is PC937. If you don't have this in your collection, you might want to check this one out. So I'm just going to come to the outside edge and I'm just going to do a dusting of that Tuscan Red right on the edge. We look at that. That is cool. All right, so that's the way I'm going to handle my mushrooms and the inside of my um, my uh, Braven sword. Okay, so you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine, and then when we come back, we're going to add a little bit into the center here. Okay, so really enjoying where this is going. I'm loving seeing that brown start to move out into the outer edges. Now because I'm traveling right now I actually have a pared down Zentangle kit with me and I don't have my grays with me. I know I'm feeling very sad about it too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with my blending stump and my graphite pencil that I have here. I will not be using my coveted uh, 1065 which is the cool gray that a 70% cool gray. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to come into the center of our uh, walk the line here. And I'm going to zoom in on this and I'm going to do the shading much like I did with the, uh, the mushroom. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a very light dusting of gray here just on the right hand side and a little bit below and then I'm going to take my blender stump and I'm going to blur it out. And then I'm going to come back in with the graphite again. And I am going to push a little bit harder with some of that gray or the graphite. And then you'll see I've got my blender stump again coming in here. And I love the way that that looks. It has a really nice soft feel. So I'm going to go around to all of these and do the exact same thing with those. And I hope you'll join me in that. Now what I neglected to say before I left you on that last part was if you don't have a blending stump you can always use a Q-tip. Q-tips make excellent blending stumps especially when you're working with lots of different kinds of colors. You know it's nice to have a ton of Q-tips around to work with that. But for the graphite today, I happen to have my blender stump with me. So um, for those of you who don't, grab a Q-tip and work with it that way. And look at how pretty that turned out in the center. I'm really enjoying those. So let's talk about snack here. We still have that little part in there uh, that we're going to be working with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in right underneath the head of this S here that we have and just do a little dusting in there. I'm also going to come up to the top and do a little dusting of that gray. And then down at the bottom I'm going to let this come up from the bottom. You'll notice that I'm going to leave quite a bit of white in here. So I've got that nice light dusting and let's go ahead and zoom in on that for you so you can see it. I'm going to take my blending stump but you can also use your Q-tip for this if you don't have your blender. I'm just blending it out. I'm going to come in here and give that a little bit of a blend and over here a little bit of a blend. And you know for those of you who are using blending stumps for the first time you do not have to press hard on these. You know they will do what they need to do just by you know going lightly over them. You don't have to press hard. And so I'm going to come in now with a little bit of heaviness on the graphite pencil here. And I'm going to let that travel up the side a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and blur that out. Now we have a really nice oops opportunity here. You know this feels like that got a little bit far down and so one of the things that I like to do is I use a kneaded eraser and if my blending ever gets a little too overzealous with a graphite pencil you can use 
your little eraser just to give it a little bit of extra oomph. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down the belly of this and give a little bit of lightness in towards the center here. Not too, too much, but just a little bit. And I can take my blender stump now and just leave that little highlight of white on that side. Because I'm really trying to exaggerate the shape of that S and so my blender just got a little bit out of control there. So this is kind of a nice way to do it. So let's do this again and let's let's hope that this one goes a little bit better. I'll probably really be really good at it by the time we get all the way around. <laughs> um, so you know that's always how it goes. We learn every time we do Zentangles, don't we? You know, it's not it's not like it's, uh, you're never perfect. It's always a learning curve, right? So this one, I'm going to let it go down a little bit and then a little dusting right under the belly here. Okay, so I'm going to come in being very mindful to leave a little bit of that lightness and a little bit over here. Careful not to get down too far. That one I like a lot better. And a little dusting of the darker right on the edge. Dusting at the bottom. Well, actually, it's not dusting. I'm giving this a little bit of a push. And then I'm going to blur it out. That's really got a nice feel to it so that when I go ahead and zoom out, if it'll let me, look at how cool those are. They have just like this, it has a really nice movement to it, doesn't it? I really like the feeling of that. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up these two, and then when we come back, we're going to start to work in the background. All right, so look at how fun those are. Really enjoying this a lot. So let's go ahead and start to work into the background here. Now I'm going to pick up my purples again because I used purple in the center of my piece and you know for me sometimes I like to have a lone color but sometimes I also really enjoy having a color that's being carried from the outside in and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my lilac and I'm also going to pick up my violet. Now this feels really intense to me and I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it the way that it is or not but I do know that I want the background to be a lot softer. So let me do a demonstration of how we're going to handle it and I'm going to do it in this quadrant right here. So you'll notice that we've got you know three other areas so I'm going to just be in this first quadrant. I'm all sharpened up. This is the lilac that we used earlier and I'm going to work on the side of lilac here. So I'm working on the side of lilac and I'm going very, very lightly on this. And just dusting it in. And you can see that what this is going to do is it's going to start to give some congruency to the piece because before it was just like wowza you're just looking into the center of the piece and it doesn't have any congruency anywhere else. So I'm just dusting around where mushroom is and dusting around where um, Braven Sword is. I'll just get right over here too. So you see that I'm working on the side of that pencil using that to fill in the space. So now once I have that I'm going to start to press a little bit harder towards the outside edge. I'm still working on the side of that pencil because I do want it to have kind of a thickness to it. I almost want this to have a feeling of watercolor where you're getting a shadow from the frame box of the piece. So I'm just getting in here right on the outside edge and dusting this in. Really having some fun with it.
and you'll see that I'm working in little circular motions. That circular motion is what gives me the mist of color. So really getting into the habit of circles really helps. Now I'm going to pick up that violet. And I'm going to start to dust the edge. just taking my time with it. I'm not pressing hard. I'm pressing really quite lightly because the darker the color, the more pigmentation it has. So you really don't have to press all that much. So just getting in there, dusting that in. Letting that almost like a foggy like quality to that purple. Now I'm going to press a little bit harder right on the edge. Really get that framed in. I love that. Look at that. That's got a really nice kind of softness that's kind of floating around it. Now I'm going to pick back up that lilac and I'm going to just blur out my edges just a little bit where that violet is meeting the lilac. So you can see that I'm just doing little circles where the violet is meeting the lilac and I'm getting kind of this middle color, you know, where the two are meeting. And if you want to, you can pick up your white, but I, I think I'm liking where this is right now. I think this has really got a softness to it that is speaking to me. So I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to do mine. And if you want to go ahead and do yours, look at how cool this is going to be. Wow. Here, watch. Just by seeing that much. Woo! Wee, that is so cool. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to work on the center a little bit more because I, I just don't feel done with it. So I'm loving this but I feel like that center is just still a little too bold for me. So I'm actually going to come in with some goldenrod and I know you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my god, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like this is just too bombastic in here. So I'm going to come in with some goldenrod and I'm going to just dust in a little bit of that goldenrod into the piece and what that's going to do is it's going to give the center a little bit of a relationship with what's going on around it. Now normally people tell you not to put brown and purple together because you get more of a kind of I don't know mud color but because goldenrod has so much orange in it and because I had such light pinks in there and light purples look at what happened when I added just a little bit of that brown in there I just I love the way that that looks it's almost like a, a suntan that just happened for it now I'm also going to do just a little bit of dusting of some goldenrod into the areas of where that lighter purple is in the background. I want it to look like it's a watercolor. So you can see that I'm being really random and just floating in little pieces of goldenrod into the lightest parts of where the purple is in the background. And it almost makes it look like 
the color just kind of seeped in from another place you know it gives it an antiquing that I really really like and I love to do this because it just is kind of a unique quality and look at how that just gives it such a nice feeling So I hope that you will be bold enough to try it with yours and see how you like it. I'm not pressing hard and I may even just kind of run it near where um, snack is just to get snack to pop off the page a little bit more. You can see I'm just kind of dusting it a little bit where that tangle is. And I think I like that a lot better now that I've done it. How about you? How's that working out for you? I hope it's working out for you. <laughs> All right. Now you're probably asking in your head, okay, is she going to use the white gel pen? Is she not going to use the white gel pen? And so I am going to use the white gel pen. I'm going to just turn this because that's where my light source is. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this bad boy here. So you can see that I'm going to just come over into this side right over here and you can see I'm using the Mizu Love white gel pen but you can use your Signo Uniball or you can use your Sakura um, Jelly Roll, either one is fine. And I'm just going to give it a couple of dots. And I just, I love the way that the gel pen just makes the piece feel really complete. It gives it that um, I don't know that that sparkle or shimmer and I'm going to add just a skosh of it into these areas where we added a little bit of dark shading just to get it to shimmer a little I really like that I think that's that's looking pretty nice. Now I also feel like the center is missing a little bit of depth. So you can see around the stone here what I'd like to do is I'd like to come in and just give a little bit of gray. I've got my graphite pencil in my hand here and I'm just going to add a little bit of gray on both sides and you'll notice I'm leaving some shimmer of white at the top and the bottom and I think I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the inside here and here as well just to give this some interest. I'll pick up my blending stump and blur my edges And then I think I'm going to carry some of that gray also into where I've got my sunflowers. So you can see that I'm going to come in and give that some intensity over here. And then in here as well. Look at how that gives that a little bit more depth. It feels a little flat to me here. So I'm just going in and giving this some extra shading. And for me, you know, when I started doing Zentangle, shading really just, it blew my mind. It was like, I had no idea you could do that with this. And and it gave me such a sense of satisfaction. I know a lot of people can be really overwhelmed by shading, but for me, it's where the magic is. You know, I just get so into the Zen of it. So I'm just going over here and in here, and then I'll finish up this one on the side. You go ahead and do yours and I'll finish up mine. So before I take this to the very finish line, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of weight onto my uh, tangle right in here. This is snack that we were working with. I feel like it's still getting a little bit lost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the head of the spiral here and I'm going to put a little weight on it. And I'm going to let this kind of fill in. 
just to give it a little bit of intensity. And I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to do just that. I just feel like it's getting a little bit lost and I like to have a little bit more vividness in the piece. So I'm just coming in, adding a little bit of weight right here at the top. Getting right in there. Really just letting it have just a little bit more vividness right there. That was a little bit blurry of a line there, but I think that's okay. And that feels a little bit more vivid to me. I hope it's feeling a little bit more vivid to you as well. Let's see if I can round that one off a little bit. I really like that. I think that's really giving it a little bit more intensity on the outside edges. So if you want to add that little bit to it, you can go ahead and add that to yours too. So I've gone ahead here and I've put my chop right here in the corner. I like to hide my chop in the piece. That way it makes it more about the Zentangle and less about my signature. And I also like to take some time right now and just enjoy what I've created because this has been so much fun for me and I hope that you've been having a good time too. And I, I just want to express gratitude for the opportunity to teach you today, but also for the opportunity to take some time out and really be in the present moment and enjoy the creative process. I also want to say a big thank you to Stephanie Jennifer. She is the woman responsible for putting together all the tangles for Inktober Tangles. If you're not involved with this challenge but would like to be, you can go on to Facebook and she is involved with Seven Forests, Five Rivers and it is part of their challenge page. You can look them up there and they have a wonderful community of tanglers and you'll learn so much from them. So I just wanted to give a big shout shout out to Stephanie for putting all of these tangles together for Inktober tangles and then a special thank you to all the CZTs that created these beautiful tangles for us today. So if you enjoyed today's class, please give us a thumbs up or a nice review. Even better, will you hit the subscribe button up at the top of your page? That way you'll be notified whenever I offer news and tangle classes on my YouTube page. And if you'd like to know more about my teaching, you could head over to the Tangled Yogi Art Community page on Facebook and join us there. And we've got a wonderful community of students that share their work, and it's such a fun group. I hope you'll join us there. All right, that's it for me. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. Until we tangle together, bye for now.